Okay, so here's an interesting thing. Um, according to some forms of utilitarianism, there's not just one kind of pleasure. There are, in fact, a spectrum, higher and lower pleasures. The key idea here is really a divide between two things. On the one side, there are utilitarians who think that pleasure, happiness, is all about quantity, the amount alone, versus those who think it is about quantity and quality. There are eff effectively preferable pleasure pleasures and less pleasure, uh, pl preferable pleasures. Uh, pleasurable pleasures? That's not a thing. Okay, so... Um, Let's just define hedonism quickly, because these are, of course, hedonic uh, theories of utilitarianism. Hedonism says that pleasure is good. And when it comes to utilitarianism specifically... We have this idea that pleasure is the same as happiness. So imagine them in some sort of a circle, a triangle. They're all the same thing. Three points on the same triangle. So I want to start with... Uh, a, a brief description before we get to the concept of higher and lower pleasures of the idea of quantity alone being the important thing. The person who really supported this was Jeremy Bentham. Now, Bentham thought that all pleasure, no matter what it was, is the same amount, is, is the same kind of thing. It's just a reaction. But you get different amounts from different things, but it's all about quantity. They are all equal in quality. As he says, prejudice apart. So this means, you know, apart from prejudging things, not prejudging things, the game of pushpin is equal, is of equal value, and that's important, they're the same kind of quality to the arts, sciences, music, and poetry. In other words, we might think that uh, things like art and music and uh, books and so on are, because we've been told to think, the preferable kind. Whereas things like Pushpin, which I believe, at least, is some sort of children's game uh, played uh, several hundred years ago, uh, involving pins that you push into a board. It sounds awful, but you might think instead some sort of computer game or something, okay? So these two things, although we think we're told that one is better than the other, he says really they're not. They just give you pleasure. Now some might give you more pleasure than others, but the kind of pleasure they give is the same. And that's his central point. The kind of pleasure is the same. When prejudice is taken out. So the only thing that matters is of course, the amount. Now, what Bentham says is that we can work out then, of course, what the right thing to do according to the hedonic calculus. Which takes into account things like duration uh, and likelihood and, and how many people it affects. Quality, though, you'll notice, is missing from hedonic calculus, from those seven rules. Now, I want to compare this with John Stuart Mill. 
John Stuart Mill, who was uh, the uh, student of Jeremy Bentham, uh, Bentham's uh, godson, in fact, uh, James Mill and Jeremy Bentham. So James Mill was J John Stuart Mill's father. Uh, Bentham and Mill were very, very good friends and oversaw the education of John Stuart Mill. Uh, John Stuart Mill was a great genius, um, but he believed that there was fundamentally a difference between different kinds of pleasure. He wrote this. He wrote, It is better, better to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. So what he's saying there is that there is a scale. Even if you're a human being it, and unhappy, it's better than being a pig and happy. It's also better, again, to be Socrates dissatisfied, Socrates being one of the greatest geniuses of all time, than a fool satisfied. So it's better to be Socrates unhappy than a fool happy. What he's saying here is that there is a kind of scale. And this scale, from kind of animals down at the bottom all the way up to great geniuses, is really a scale of intelligence, isn't it? He thinks there are higher and lower pleasures. And one way of describing this is that higher pleasures are those of the mind. Remember that Bentham made this distinction between the two uh, and said they're all the same? Well, Mill would say no. No, they're not. These are better than these. Lower pleasures... are those that pigs can enjoy as well as Socrates. They are of the body. So, why does he think this? Well, why is a very interesting question. Essentially, he thinks this because we would probably prefer to be a human than a pig, even if that pig was extremely happy. We would prefer to be a human rather than a pig. And why would we prefer to be a human rather than a pig? Because we're capable of more rational thought, more interesting kinds of thought. The final question that you probably have uh, in regards to, to Mill is, how on earth do we decide between the higher pleasures and the lower pleasures? Well, we decide which ones go into which category. So, between between uh, higher and lower this way. We get together a group, a group of what he calls competent judges. And these competent judges, one of whom seems to be floating in midair and much shorter than the others, um, maybe he's behind. Let's say it's a perspective thing and not a bad drawing. Um, these competent judges have experienced both kinds and then they will tell you which one is better. And whichever one is better is the higher pleasure because the higher pleasure, remember, is the preferable one even if there is less of it. There we go, higher and lower pleasures.